Rich Side Canine coming to you today with kind of a new little series that we're going to shoot. Rich Side Canine uh, TV, Rich Side Vlogs, kind of all the same thing. Today we're going to talk very briefly about breed profiles, genetics, instincts, and the makeup of dogs. And critically important it is to know what you are buying, what you're adopting, what you're rescuing prior to making that jump, okay? Too often we're doing these leaps of faith and then the leaps of faith result in very serious accidents afterwards and or a tremendous amount of money invested in training in order to try to get the dog under control. What we like to do is focus on Let's understand what we have, the breed we have, the possibilities, the ingrained genetic traits of that dog and work with those traits in order to accomplish training goals and uh, long-term vision and what you wanna do with your dog. At the same time, we cannot defy logic. We cannot defy science. We cannot defy mother nature for lack of better words. You can't buy a Caucasian Shepherd and then be totally blown away that he's mildly aggressive towards people. He was bred to kill people in prisons at times, so keep that in mind. Okay guys, continuing with the breed profile. We have a young Doberman Pinscher, incredibly high drive dog. Over the top as far as most Dobermans are today. This owner or purchased this dog, kind of assuming it was gonna be like their last Doberman, and what they got was a dog with very real world-class potential and bite work. Um, sport the whole nine yards very dog aggressive has had bites amongst people accidental of course but again example of really researching the bloodline before you get it moving down the road here we have a wolf dog this dog is way more wolf than he is dog very heavy import from Spain you can't buy a dog like this and then be surprised that he wants to kill chickens and kill small animals and is very 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 dog aggressive and also loves to communicate with his mouth He's very mouthy, he's very licky, he always wants to come up and jump and lick your face and do this little where, where, where thing. This is the wolf in him. If I stand up, odds are he's gonna jump up. Of course, the one time I do that, he doesn't, it's on camera. But he always wants to be up like this and be right in your face, okay? So again, know what you're getting, know what the breed is, know the potential, know what could go wrong, and know with good training what could go right. Moving down the road here, we have I believe this is a Labradoodle. I might be a little wrong. Might be one of those other mixes. But again, you can't take this dog and then expect him to perform like a Malinois in a sport or working ability. We can't take this dog and expect him to be a catch dog like an American Bulldog or an American Pit Bull Terrier, right? We have to know the limits and the capability of the dog and then stick with that. If you want a dog to do something else, buy a dog breed that specializes in that trait. See this guy biting my shirt through the forest here? Wolf dog for you. And, and this is probably gonna blow up my face again here, but notice I'm in a kennel full of very serious dogs. You don't hear chaos in here right now. I've got camp, see, that's that wolf. We got camera equipment set up, I'm talking, I'm being abnormal, I'm not focusing on the dogs, dogs don't normally like that. And you don't see him going bananas. That's very important. Any other dog turns out there would most likely already pick up on that. Here we have a Caucasian Shepherd who is very tired because we just came in from outside and his gas tank is not full. Another example of if I want to take a dog to go running with me, to go hiking routinely, things like this, not a good dog to have, right? On the flip side, if I want to live up in the mountains and I live in a very remote environment and I'm worried about bears, wolves, foxes, things like this, this may be a good dog to have because he is a true warrior, right? A dog for a dog park? I don't think so. Is he very cute, cuddly? Uh, not so much, but he can be affectionate when he wants to be. But he's also 150 some pounds of pure muscle with ingrained aggression. You can't defy that. This dog is ingrained to be aggressive, ingrained to catch and kill. You cannot defy that. Yes, we can get control. Yes, we can set boundaries and limitations and absolute consequences to his behavior, but the genetics are there. Know it before you buy it. Coming down here, we have a little Staffordshire Terrier. Maybe Staffordshire Bull Terrier, Staffordshire Terrier, but just a little high drive pocket rocket. You know what I mean? Again, 
I would trust this dog with children before I ever trusted it with like a little kitten, right? I would trust this dog in almost every situation when it comes to biting, that he will not bite a person. Could I take this dog to a dog park? Probably not a good idea, right? Keep that in mind when you're dealing with any of the bully breeds, American Pit Bull Terrier, Bull Terrier, Staffshire Terrier, American Bulldog, Bullies, all these different exotic Pit Bull Bulldogs you have now where they're making these XL dogs and these mini dogs and whatever. They're just messing with genetics. But very good with people, awesome with children, not so good with other animals. Moving down here, we have a band dog. When I say band dog, some people will look at this dog and say he's a pit bull. He's absolutely not an American pit bull terrier. Anybody that knows an American pit bull terrier will look at him and say that ain't no pit bull. Yes, there's pit bull in him. To the uneducated backyard person, they may say he's a pit bull. To anybody with a little bit of knowledge, they're going to say he's a band dog, maybe some cure dog mix in there, things like this. But at the end of the day, this dog's very affectionate to people. He can't be aggressive, but he's very affectionate to, to myself and to his owner. He could legitimately kill another dog, very real. And he'll wag his tail the whole time, and he'll enjoy the whole thing. And this would be a dog, somebody would say, I just don't know what happened. And he was wagging his tail, and he attacked the dog. He was wagging his tail, anticipating a dog fight, because his genetics tell him, this makes me happy. You can never get rid of that in a bully breed. Yes, you can build boundaries, limitations, control. We can use tools, e-collars, pinchers, chokers, muzzles, double lines, all these things to gain control. But unsupervised, outside of your presence and your physical control, two dogs, they will fight. Always remember that, okay? So again, know what you're getting and research the breed, the traits, etc. Okay, guys, in closing, all I want to bring up is do your research I love training dogs. We love getting new clients. We work with anybody that comes to us. Sometimes I have to take a step back and really look at the person and their request and just tell them what they are asking. Borderline defies logic and reasoning, flies in the face of genetics and instinct. And yes, we can get dogs to do just about any task, but getting a dog to work outside of its ingrained genetics can be very difficult and require a tremendous amount of training and hours put into that. Whereas, you can get a dog and use their genetics, use their drive, use their instinct, use everything that's been bred into that dog for maybe 100 years and very quickly have it on task with clarity, performing as you want it to do so. These are just my opinion. It really means nothing. I'm a nobody. I know nothing. I have no experience. I got that out of the way for all the uh, critics out there. but. In reality, again, this is just my opinion from working with a tremendous amount of dogs, most of which have very serious, very real problems, human aggression, dog aggression, or they want to go out there and kill everything that walks. So what I'm speaking of right now is from doing this as a professional. Okay? Still, with that being said, I have a mountain to learn. I'm always seeking out new information, as you should be. When you get a new dog, I highly, highly, highly encourage you contact a professional. Look for somebody out there that understands training, understands genetics, and can work with you, your dog, their genetics, your personality, mesh it all together, and give you an awesome final product. Rich Side Canine.